story is sponsored by Plantenberg's Food Pride Store in Richmond, your fourth generation locally owned grocery and specialty meat store where fresh food and customer service is still the way they do business. Plantenberg's custom meats and homemade sausage are regionally famous. Their special varieties of sausage and wieners are a delight to serve as a part of your daily meals or for that special holiday gathering. For generations, the Plantenbergs have been committed to providing quality food products that even Grandma would be proud to serve. Uh, my name is Larry Lahr, City Administrator in Cold Spring, and I'm talking with you on Digilog about a proposed project that is uh, going to be located in the former Cold Spring Wood Products building, which is uh, along Highway 23. And the proposal is that um, a developer would bring into that building a business that is uh, related to what we call the small wind industry. Um, so they're uh, electricity generating wind turbines that are similar to what we would see uh, maybe in southern parts of Minnesota, but these are on a much smaller scale. Uh, typically the towers are 120 feet high, um, generally uh, maybe as high as 150. Um, and so the idea is that um, the council certainly is very supportive, along with the other city commissions of the project. Uh, what is at issue is the developer has proposed along with that project to build one of these turbines on that site. Um, certainly not ideal in terms of uh, location, and yet uh, the council is forced to balance the interest in landing the business with uh, some concerns about the, the wind turbine. And so um, what they're going to do is make their decision whether uh, to pursue this project aggressively or not based upon the input that they receive from those uh, neighbors, especially on the 29th of April. Uh, that discussion will begin at 7.30 in the evening, and it'll be here at the Council Chambers in City Hall. As part of Digilog Recorey's ongoing coverage of the wind turbine issue in Cold Spring, we had a chance to sit in on a presentation given by David Winkleman of Ecosystems LLC. In part two of this story, you'll hear more from Mr. Winkleman, as well as get a chance to listen in on the question and answer discussion that was held at the end of the meeting. But now. With that in mind, you know, I heard there was some opposition to small wind down here, so I brought along some slides on, on small wind and how it works and why it works. Um, I mentioned before you can plug and play a small wind turbine wherever you have 150 amp service. And for this size, you can go smaller than this, you can go down to a 10 kilowatt, half this size, and that'll work in a 75 or 100 amp breaker. Or you can go down to a tiny one, let's say two kilowatts, and that'll work in a 15 amp breaker. So you can plug and play these things wherever there's electric service, and that's the difference between this and the big wind turbines. The big wind turbines are kind of like trying to put in the railroad. I mean, you've got to have, you've got to get all the permits. It takes years to get the permits for the transmission lines. You've got to wheel that power over the transmission lines. You have to get a power purchase agreement. You have to go through what's called the MISO Q. And there's a lot of work necessary to get the big wind turbines, where this is more like buying a pickup. You can go out, or a tractor, you can go out and buy it and put it to work right away. You don't have to wait for all the permits. So this is a way that Americans can become more independent. You can have your own distributed energy right on your place, right on the roof of your buildings. You can have solar panel. If you don't want to look at a wind turbine, put up solar panels in your building, or put in geothermal heat instead of the gas. It costs a whole lot less, a little bit of upfront cost. And of course, the neighbor's concerns about visual and noise. Uh, the best way to do it is to, like I say, go out and sit underneath the one, get somewhere around it where you want to you know, hear it, and you'll realize that there, are, there isn't a lot of noise from this Jacobs unit. There are noisier units out there, and there are units that are less noisy than this too. So there are many different types of wind turbines. Go ahead. Is there a certain point when um, the machine will enact a break as the wind gets too fast? Well, that's a good question. There, governor systems are what you're asking about. The blades normally sit flat to the wind. If you look closely, you'll see springs on these blades. Let's see. Right. There's two s springs to each blade, and those springs allow the, the blades to yield. So when the wind gets about 25 miles an hour, it starts to feather. And we get to about 40 miles an hour, they're going parallel to the wind. And then when it gets over 60 miles an hour, the tail folds. The tail folds to the blade, so then the blades point right at the wind. 
So the total effect of this is the RPMs don't get over about 200 RPMs all the way through the cycle of the machine. So Jacobs has sold 20,000 of these machines since they started, and this governor system has been tested and proven through time. Uh, this governor system is the best governor system on a small wind turbine, and that's Jacobs' claim to fame. You know, everybody gains when we go to um, renewable energy, you know, but that's not what they have in mind. My job is to represent the people of Cold Spring, whether I agree with them or not. Um, I would like to see the business in town. I would not like to turn it away. However, I don't believe that's an ideal spot for a wind turbine. I believe it's too close to homes, and um, I don't know if that meshes with what we're doing. However, if we can put a wind turbine someplace else, that's a more suitable location for it, so that we can try to have a win-win situation is what I'm kind of going towards. I, I want to work towards a win-win, a win for you and a win for the community. Because I think that the business um, is a very attractive one. I think it would be, uh, I was just walking the site before I came here and I think it would be a definite improvement um, for that part of town as people are entering the, co the community. And um, I can see a lot of benefit to the business. Um, so I would like to see it located in Cold Spring. However, the wind turbine being right there, I need to know, is that a deal breaker for you? Pretty much so, yeah, because it's a wind business. And if we can't show our product there where our sales showcase is, it would not be very attractive. Because we have houses on the hill right there. And I having this wind turbine is a real problem for me. And so I'm trying to find a solution or a way to work around that. And if I'm buying one, seeing one on a monopole, isn't helpful to me. I needed to have it down on the ground so I can look at so I can look into it, so I can see what it looks like. And maybe you're going to have that inside the building. I don't know. And so maybe that's why, you know what I mean? But I'm tr trying to think of a way that it benefits your business, but we avoid having to have a wind turbine right there against houses when people in town are saying, if it's for private benefit, not so much. If it's for public good, then I could live with it. Um, the way I, I look at it is you're going to set up a 120 foot tower 200 feet away from the houses that are behind there and if you go 200 feet to the north of that they got a 120 foot tower sitting in the ballpark and that doesn't seem to be a problem with anybody. Yeah, yeah there's other towers around the city too you know if you look. Okay. So it's not like not creating noise though. Yeah, well, the, the noise issue, I invite all of you to, to go to a wind turbine and uh, sit underneath of it during a windy day, and, and you'll see that the noise is really not an issue. Bob, did you have a question? Um, there's a nonprofit organization just on County Road 2 north of Cold Spring, and they're very much interested in the idea of putting up a tower on, on their location. And, and somebody else mentioned the fact that right across the road, right across 23 from, from um, Tom's current location, there is an, 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 a big piece of land that maybe would work. And um, so somebody came up with the idea that, that maybe you can't have a full-size tower that close to the residential area, um, but maybe it could be something smaller, the, the trailer version <coughs> you were mentioning before, um, that, would, that would work and, and generate uh, some, some actual electricity. But on County Road 2, again, another way into the city of Cold Spring, from the south we have one, from the north we have one, on Highway 23 we have one. Um, that's why, again, I think I love the idea of the business where it is. I really, truly do. I think it would be nice. But is it possible, is it a deal breaker if we have a tower on the north side of town, if we have one on the south side of town, maybe you put one across the road um, so you don't have a, a full-sized 120, 150 foot tower on your property, but you're surrounded by them and you have a smaller unit on your property. Is that something you would be willing to consider? Sure. Yes. Because from what I was hearing at the showcase, it sounds like there is a good deal of support um, from community members um, in this area that, that like the idea. 